Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 105, and it's titled How to Use Sex Toys in the Bedroom. We actually sometimes, this is a question that does come up. It's not a subject we've covered so far on the show at all, um, but people do ask us this question, so I think it could be really interesting. Plus, we have a special guest who is an expert on sex toys, so that's going to be interesting. We're going we're gonna to dive down into all kinds of things, sex toys, like you know how to use them, what are the best ones, all that kind of stuff. So I think it could be a very fun and interesting show. Absolutely. And full disclosure, neither you and I really use sex toys. So this is why we're like, we need to have somebody who really knows what they're doing. I have used sex toys in the past and we'll probably talk about that maybe later, but it's not something we play with together. So um, yeah, let's see where these conversations go. And um, before we introduce our special guest today, let's give a big shout out to our sponsors, Power and Mastery. So if you want to join the secret club of men who are great in bed, then check out Power and Mastery at powerandmastery.com. It is the most complete sexual mastery training for men. Whether you want to last longer in the bedroom, have harder erections, or increase your sexual skills, there is something for you at powerandmastery.com. So today we have a special guest, Alexandra Fine. She is a lifelong student of sexual health. She's co-founder and CEO of Dame Products, a credentialed sexologist and a member of Forbes 30 Under 30 2018. She co-founded Dame Products to start necessary conversations to listen rather than assume and to create products that enhance intimacy. And this is exactly why today we have Alexandra on the show. So welcome, Alex. Oh, hi, thank you. Good <laughs> <laughs> to be here. <laughs> Yeah. So we want our listeners to get to know you a little bit more because this is reading your bio is pretty cool. So you, you co-founded a sex toy company. I mean, you're a sexologist. There's a lot of things here for, about you and we want to learn more about your yeah, background. So, so tell our audience how you came to be an expert in this subject. <laughs> uh, it's so interesting. I still sometimes, you know, I feel like for me with sexuality, it's like I'm a lifelong learner. Like that's what my interest is in it. Um, and I'm still always learning, but I do, you know, I think I know quite a bit these days. So I um, have my master's in clinical psychology from Columbia. Um, I wanted to be a sex therapist for a long time. Um, I mean, actually really kind of to take a, a step back, really kind of where my interest just very like first started um, was when I was six. My aunt brought me to this party where there were drag queens and I learned both kind of how to strut my stuff and how to do a catwalk from them. They kind of like showed me how to like really perform my femininity. And then they also kind of answered all of these really like honest questions I had about their gender identity and expression. And I went back to show and tell um, to my first grade class and explained what I had learned. Cause you know, my mind was blown. Like I just left the suburbs to go hang out with my aunt in the city. And I learned so much about just all the different ways of being. Um, and I got in trouble when I, when I explained what I had learned to my class, and I think that really got me interested in what is what are these truths in life that we're, for some reason, really not supposed to talk about, but they seem so fundamental to both who we are, how why we how we exist, um, and I just never got a good answer for why we weren't talking about it, and I think that just like set me down that path. Plus, so like sex feels good. And that's nice. <laughs> yes, it does. So was that the last time your parents ever let you hang out with your aunt? <laughs> I was definitely not allowed to sleep over at her place anymore. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> which is a bummer because I think she really expanded my understanding of the way you could live life. 
Yeah. You know, so I, we're big proponents of good early sexual education for children. But I do have to say, six is pretty early. <laughs> that was pretty early for your aunt to take you there. So you had to- Well, it wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't like I was learning about sex. I was really more about gender. Um, and a li- I didn't really learn too much about sexuality, but I think it rubbed up against it in a way that made people uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you started at six. You st- it's it it opened up this like world of possibilities and questions, and then kind of like led you to continue studying this. So I want to get into some of the nitty gritty. And since today we're talking about sex toys, I want to learn about what was the first object you ever used as a sex toy. Oof, my stuffed <laughs> animal. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely my stuffed animals. Um, yeah, pillows and stuffed animals when I was younger. I, <laughs> um, I don't know how exactly I learned that, you know, friction on my genitals felt good, but I definitely learned that. And I also don't know how I learned you weren't supposed to tell anybody about it or that it was like shameful, but I also have really early memories of being really embarrassed, like after I would do it. Not that like anybody was there, but that like I would do this thing and it felt really good. And then I would feel really like, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. Like, and I have memories from like probably six or seven of doing that. And it's interesting because I don't know how, I don't know where, all, where I got all that information. I don't think so I got it. I think one of my first sex toys was actually a tennis ball. And I was really liking the roughness of the tennis ball. Mm. And then my grandpa went to China and gifted me chopsticks. And I found a way to use these chopsticks. And I think <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So, you know... <laughs> There's a couple of things I love about this. So that was actually, I wrote that question because every girlfriend I've ever had has always had a story about the first thing, whether it was the, the massaging shower head or yeah. it was the stuffed animals or, or whatever. And so I was really curious as somebody who decided to start a company based around sex toys, if any of your early childhood experiences influenced, you know, either what you make now or even that decision, right? Oh, yeah, I, I don't think that that necessarily did. I do know that when I was in high school, though, that like, I was like, I want a sex toy. And I remember like looking and like, well, one, I wasn't 18. So it was really challenging to buy one. And I just remember like, seeing like very, very phallic looking sex toys. And I think like, somehow I got my hands on like, uh, it was like a plastic stick that was actually quite painful and uncomfortable and not pleasant to use. Um, oh, so. that's interesting. So I'm curious about that. Before then you, you created your own line of products, what was your experience? Like tell us more, because like you're saying, okay, I used this first story and it was painful. I didn't like how it looked. Like, um, did you have other experiences or, and were you a, a big sex store users then? Yeah, I would say, yeah. And then, like, in college, I remember going to, like, some of the sex shops in St. Louis, which is where I went to undergrad. Um, And I got this small bullet that was squishier, which I I, I just instinctively knew I was going to like more. And it had, like, a cord and then, like, a remote control. And I was using that um, somewhat regularly. And then one day I wanted it to work and it wouldn't work. And I put new batteries and it wasn't working. And I was fiddling around with the batteries and the wires and I, it lit on fire. Like I, (laughs) no joke, it started smoking and like flames came out of it. And like, I I know what I did now, which is I short circuited it. Like I kind of crossed some wires that should not have been exposed. Like, that shouldn't happen. You know, I think it was both like, wow, vibrators are, you know, 
inexpensive vibrator winners are inexpensive. Um, I think it was also probably jelly, so it probably had like some phthalates in it and things that weren't so great for you. Um, and then later in college, I bought a vibrator that I really, really liked. Um, and it was such a nicer experience. Um, the product just worked better for me and it looked more aesthetically pleasing and not like a penis, you know, which, you know, I'm not, I was never trying to, to replace, you know, a partner in any way. And I also, for me, when I masturbate, I predominantly want external stimulation. I'm not necessarily interested in internal stimulation, though most products are really made for internal stimulation. Um, and then, you know, I think it was really about, I just love these tools. I relied on them and used them fairly frequently and felt like there was not a brand out there that represented my experience with the, with the products, both in the products themselves, in the marketing. Um, and I had tried this one one product that was a partner toy and it goes inside of the vagina along with the penis and it loops back around to provide clitoral stimulation. And cause I, you know, I was looking for ways of getting additional clitoral stimulation during sex because that is such a, um, such a powerful place for me, a place where I can, you know, I, I get a lot of sensation um, and wanted to get more of that sensation during sex. Um, so we tried this tool and it was kind of uncomfortable and my partner also really disliked it, felt that, you know, it was really like a barrier between us and he didn't feel like he could feel me as well. And so that wasn't so great. And I was like, oh, how can we just kind of get half of this product? How can I just get the cultural stimulation? And that led me to invent my first product, which is called Eva. It's a hands-free cultural vibrator that can be worn on top of the clitoris, um, so it's worn externally during penetrative sex. Um, and yeah, that product, we launched it on Indiegogo and raised quite a bit of money, and that was how I started the company. Okay, so there's a couple of interesting things. <laughs> the, the first one is, is, you know, we've heard some really good sex toy fail stories before, but this is the first time I've heard anybody tell me they lit theirs on fire. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I had, the, I had the funniest picture of you like there naked with your, your vibrator and all of a sudden the thing just bursts into flames. <laughs> I just needed it to work, you know, like in that moment, you're just like, come on, come on, come on. Like I'm ready. Like you've got to be ready. Uh, um, and here's, and, the, yeah. here's the second thing that I thought was cool about what you were telling us is that you started this company and you designed the products based on your actual user experience. And that is something I think that's probably different from a lot of companies. You know, a lot of companies out there is just like, oh, we're just going to make a cheap product. We're going to throw this out there. We're going to do that. We just, it's all about making money. But I actually really appreciate the fact that the company was born out of like you having frustrating experiences with crap products, right? And deciding yeah. that you needed something better than that and you couldn't find it. So you're going to make it. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's actually, I think that's kind of how the best products are made. Yeah, really. absolutely. And you said something really important too that I think we'll come back to later when you were like uh, talking about just wanting the external and so that it wouldn't take away also from the partner experience. And uh, later down uh, this interview, we'll talk about bringing this into the bedroom and using it with a partner. So um, I thought it was really good because it's often one of the biggest fear, especially for men, if you start to introduce use a vibrator that he no longer will be needed. And so I love that what you're talking about is like it's a clit stimulation because we know that for most women, it's the only way they can achieve an orgasm, especially during penetration. And so being able to still use, have your partner's penis, <laughs> but have the additional stimulation of the vibrator can really create a powerful combination that can lead to powerful orgasms. <laughs> So, oh, 
So <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what else is great too is she's like over there, sort of like blushing and like putting her her head. It only took the second question in this interview to get her to blush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That means we're doing a good job over here. <laughs> so you kind of told us a little bit um, about like the Dame product and just kind of an overall, I want to know, like, what would you say is different? Like, what is different about the Dame products and your sex toys versus any other sex toys? Because there is so much out there, right? Yeah. So our products are designed um, predominantly by women and for our community. We have over 10,000 people who have signed up to be Dame Lab testers, and anybody can sign up by going to our website and um, this allows you to kind of engage with us about our products. We send out surveys and also we send out prototypes. We design and we use 3D printers in our offices in Brooklyn to develop unique products um, around a specific, I always struggle with calling them pain points, but a user need. Mm -hmm. um, and we design and develop the prototypes. We send them out to people, get real feedback iterate um until we feel great about the product and um that i think is really what sets us apart in, in our innovation and design is that we really include consumers in the process some of our products are also like truly unique in the way that they function and work um some of them are just you know have slightly small improvements on kind of your standard form, like for example, ARC, which is our, our internal product. Um, nothing too, too crazy innovative, but by really talking to a wide variety of people, we were able to create a product that we think has a, a shape that feels really great internally, provides internal pressure, and can also be used externally because what we found was from our surveys that 86% of the people we were asking who wanted to buy an internal toy were saying they were 100% going to use it externally as well. Sorry, I used two percentages in my sentence. I feel like that <laughs> was confusing. Um, but really, it's like this, this is a toy that you buy for internal stimulation, but really almost everybody's also using it externally. So through the surveys, we were able to find that out and then make small tweaks to our design to optimize for both these cases. So it's the Swiss Army vibrator then. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah, we also use um, medical grade silicone, which, you know, a lot of products will say body safe, and that does not necessarily mean that it's medical grade. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have a return policy. So if you buy products from us directly from our website, if you're unhappy, we will, we will give you your money back or you can exchange it for a different product. Um, we think that the idea that you can't return these products for hygienic purposes feels, I think like it's working on shame, you know, it's not, you can return underwear, you can return, there, there's so many products that will give you your money back if you're unhappy with them. And I think it's um, a really great example of how we are trying to remove shame from the commerce experience of, of these well, products. And I like that because I think we are all designed slightly differently and you're always taking a gamble when you're choosing a sex toy and sometimes it just doesn't fit. And the thing it says a lot about your company because, well, you don't have just one product. And then the fact that you'd be willing to be like, hey, this is what didn't fit for me or this doesn't work. And you guys might be like, hey, why don't you try this one? Ship us that one back and we'll ship you this. And you're like, oh, yeah. cool. Like, it's like you are really about the people's pleasure. <laughs> and I like that. Yes, of course. Yeah, I, customer satisfaction, right? Like, how can <laughs> that not be your most important thing as a company? <laughs> This begs the question, what do you do with the returned items? <laughs> uh, we, don't, okay. we don't actually always take the returns. It depends <laughs> on the situation. If it's a defect, we'll take them and we bleach them and then we, um, we break them down to find out like, you know, somebody said, oh, look, I feel like this isn't as, it used to be stronger mm. six months ago and I think it's weaker now. Somebody said something like that to us. We want to like validate their experience this way we know well one if it's accurate or not accurate and if there is something we need to do to make the product even better um so that's what we'll do with those and try to recycle cool. them 
<laughs> well, <laughs> so actually, I, so I'm glad to hear it sounds like um, your company really does things the right way. And that's awesome. And especially in this industry, there's a lot of uh, maybe not so great Shady. <laughs> yeah, companies out there. So it's good to see somebody in the space that does that. And <clears throat> um, I think what I want to focus on now mm -hmm. is more about using sex toys in the bedroom. Um, obviously, at the end of the show, we'll give people an opportunity to figure out how uh, they can find out more about your products and get a hold of one if they want. But let's dive a little deeper into like, okay, so what about using these sex toys? And the first question we had is, what are the benefits of using sex toys? Like, why, why should somebody go buy a sex toy and use it? I think that's a really great question. I, I, well, one, I like to be really careful with my shoulds about like, what should you do? You should do whatever feels right for you. So if you are having orgasms and you masturbating with your hands and that works for you and you have no desire to experience something else, that's great. You don't, you definitely don't need a sex toy. However, um, if you're interested in additional stimulation, if you have a hard time achieving orgasm, um, you know, about 10% of women report being anorgasmic, um, and even a higher percentage just report having difficulty achieving orgasm at some point during their lives, um, then a vibrator can be a really powerful way of experiencing an orgasm or getting different sensations. There's also different um, types of tools. So there's also products that you can use internally. So if you are interested in learning more about your, your G spot or whatever spot inside of you feels like it gives you the most pleasure, um, being able to reach inside of you, it's really hard to do that unless you have a tool or something that's going to make, you know, your hand longer, essentially. Um, so that's another benefit. I mean, for me, though, like in a more practical sense, like I just think it's really empowering to have, you know, a product in my bedstand that allows me to access my pleasure in a little in an easier way um, than if I didn't have it. And that leads me to have more orgasms in my life. And that leads me to have less stress in my life. It can boost your immune system. Um, it can help you go to sleep. Um, and I think it really does help at the end of the day, me and my partner ultimately just connect and have a stronger relationship, both because we can use that product during play if we want. And also cause I don't know, we need him. If I, you know, I don't, you know, if he's not mentally there or something, that's okay. Like mm -hmm. not reliant. Yay, orgasms. Well, <laughs> I really see them as a way not only to increase the physical pleasure, but also the emotional connection between partners. Uh, because if you're going to start to use a sex toys, and you will give our, our listeners some tips too about how to do that, you're going to have to have a conversation. You're going to have to talk about sex, to talk about your needs, about your wants. And when you do that, it creates a deeper emotional connection, deeper intimacy, and it does bring you closer. So the idea that the sex toy could um, actually get between you is actually really further from the truth. It, it's something that could bring you closer because then you're united towards a common cause of having this orgasm and getting to your pleasure. And then you're like having to have this communication and this is all part of the juiciness of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, that's, that's largely, I think on the male side, it's largely an ego thing, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like, oh, I'm not enough for you kind mm -hmm. of thing that I think that's where the fear of bringing sex toys comes in. But I think if men truly understood that it's not a, oh, you're not enough thing. It's a, oh, this is just something different or, oh, this is an aid or, oh, this is, you know, it, it could literally be, it's not you, it's me kind of thing mm -hmm. as well, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think having that conversation and having men understand that this is not because you are not good enough, big enough, long enough, last long, whatever, it's not about that, mm -hmm. um, that it's about, you know, and, and the other point I would bring in too is you mentioned that, you know, you're not always relying on him to, be, to have to provide you with the stimulation and orgasm. 
And I think that's really empowering for women too. Mm -hmm. The the fact that they can take control of their own pleasure, um, especially if he's not available or capable at that moment or whatever it is. Absolutely. You know, I think for me, actually, um, sex toys are what helped me to discover what a clit orgasm was. I was Mm -hmm. never able to masturbate to an orgasm from my clit because I would get bored and I would never do it long enough. I never understood what it took. And it's only, um, I discovered my clit when I was 23, so very late. And um, I had vaginal orgasms before I had clitoral orgasms. I never had that until I used a vibrator. Once I used a vibrator, I understood the concept of rhythm and pressure and stimulating mm. that was required. And then one day I was in a situation where I did not have my vibrator and really wanted to masturbate. And I said, why don't I try with my hands to do what my vibrator does? And that's how I taught myself to do this. And then I was able to bring that into having sex with my partner and using just our bodies to have me have clit orgasms. So without a vibrator, maybe I would never have had a clit orgasm. Totally. I think that that's so accurate. And I think that there's so that that story resonates with so many other people and so many other stories I, I've heard um, that these products can sometimes be a way of learning um, and expanding. And it doesn't mean you always need them, you know, but they, they've taught you something that you can take with you from there. And I also kind of even find too that like, when I can turn myself on, and I'm having my own personal, like working on my own energy, I can bring my energy and my sexuality to my partner. I think more Mm -hmm. authentically and better. I feel sexier because I was able to tap into that, you know, in my own space. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that helps me bring that to the collective space. That's awesome. So we talked a lot about benefits and I do want to bring maybe some of the pitfalls. I would still like to, I'm curious, what do you think, Alex, would be one of the pitfalls of using sex toys, if any? <laughs> um, I think that when it comes to sex, that if you become, it can be really easy to form a pattern. It can be really easy to be like, oh, I can only orgasm once he puts his finger in my bum or whatever it is. And then you start developing like, oh, like that one porn or one genre of porn. Um, I think it's really important to just be expansive and to not always, I mean, not always masturbate or have sex in the exact same pattern. Um, One, I think that 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 can just kind of both get boring, but it also can become reliant so i think that for some people you know if for some people a vibrator really truly is the only way they know how to achieve an orgasm and that is perfectly fine and that i don't think that the vibrators are you know research shows that they don't um produce any kind of nerve damage or change your sensitivity over time they actually can though create a desensitization in that moment just like if you touch anything like when you put your hand first in a cold water and then you get used to it there is that during the experience um but you know there's nothing wrong with always using a vibrator i think that that if that is what helps you access your pleasure then power to you um but i do think it's good to have more than one vibrator to try and masturbate in different positions um and try out different things because you'll continue to expand your concept of pleasure and the ways you can access pleasure. And I do think that that ultimately is better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm also a big proponent in, in personal responsibility. And so when it comes to, you know, people saying, Oh, well, this is bad because it creates this or that it's never the inanimate object. Mm-hmm. It's always the person and how they choose to use it. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, somebody could use a vibrator in a certain way, maybe they have an addictive personality and maybe they've trained their body to only orgasm with that specific device in that specific way. And that can have a negative impact on their relationship and maybe even their relationship to their own sexuality. But that's not, right. it's not the fault of the tool. It's the fault of the person. The user. 
Yeah, absolutely. All right. So um, we're going to give, um, we're going to have a few more questions. Super excited about bringing the sex toys in the bedroom. But before that, uh, um, we want to invite you into our uh, platinum program. So if you are a committed couple who is stuck in a rut and just going through the daily motions instead of connecting the way you used to, and you're tired of stale mechanical sex that lacks spontaneity and fun, and you don't want to live a life of average, then we would like to invite you to join you us into our highly sexed power couple platinum program so if you give us 90 days we will help you bring the passion back between the sheets and be synced up sexually so that you can thrive with more purpose and passion in life and you can find more about our program at celineremy.com forward slash passion all right alex now what would you say to our listeners who feel shy about bringing sex toys to the bedroom I would say that it's okay that you feel that way. And it's a totally valid feeling. As you can tell, I wanted to be a therapist for a while. So I <laughs> hope uh, start off by validating your feelings. Um, and then I would, you know, say that so many couples have tried using a vibrator in the bedroom or use them um, consistently. And that there is nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed of. And that I think that if you have a supportive partner, that it's important to be able to have a conversation that maybe is a little embarrassing for you about. Like that is like kind of like that's being vulnerable with your partner. And that's really important in order to like create a really great foundational and a strong relationship. So I think if you're feeling shy or feeling like this is something you can't bring up with your partner, I think that might be an indication of like probably other things that maybe you're not bringing up with your partner. Like you should real, like let's, let's sit and think about that. It's okay to be shy. It's okay to be embarrassed. Um, but you're not going to get the things you want unless you, you vocalize it um, or take action. So I would say, I believe in you. You can bring it up. You can bring the toys up. <laughs> Do it. So, and there's no one right way of introducing it. Okay. You know? So that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, how do you tell, especially if you're women, how do you tell your men that, you know, he's doing a good job and you're happy and yet you still want to use sex toys? Like kind of back to that, that concept we were talking at the beginning about not hurting his ego, well, but like this, what I want, I need. <laughs> I have a few thoughts. Well, one, the way you just expressed it was perfect, right? Which is like, hey, I just want you to know, like that sentence you just said could be used for so many people. Like, I'm really happy, but wouldn't it be fun if, or I'm really fulfilled in our relationship, but I actually really, like, I, I can actually have much more powerful orgasms if we use a vibrator. And I think that would be fun for you too. Like, you're going to enjoy experiencing my orgasm, trust me. <laughs> or like they, they in my experience that that is the reaction I've gotten. Um, yes, and you know, that I is true. Think, <laughs> yeah, it's like getting a good partner. You know, like <laughs> that's always really fun for you too. It's um, good for all. That you know, I think when I first started answering this question, I I do often say things or still think to some extent that these things are true, which is you know it's great to to maybe suggest it before you have sex. You know, maybe not immediately after, right? Because now <laughs> it's kind of like saying like it wasn't good enough. And, you know, there's all these things that we can do to make, I, mean, like, I think if we care about our partners, we do, we want to help them work with their ego in a healthy way. And we don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, but also, you know, you, it's not, you know, it's not always your responsibility to care, to hundred percent care about their ego. You know, uh, one time somebody asked me this question, I was on a panel and I gave my answer, which was very much, you know, you know, sweet, probably and compassionate. And the person next to me is Cindy Gallup, who has this website called Make Love Not Porn. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. She goes like, well, what I do is uh, when I'm having sex, I take out my vibrator and say, let's use my vibrator now. <laughs> and I was like, yes, that is like such a powerful like there's no reason why that's not okay it really mm -hmm. depends on your partner it depends on where you are at in your relationship but that is 
a totally acceptable way of introducing a vibrator into the bedroom. It doesn't need to be so gentle. It can also just mm -hmm. be like, hey, I'm going to use my vibrator now. Cool. Like, you don't have to ask for permission. I mean, honestly, if you're not the biggest advocate for your own orgasms, I mean, who else will be? And then if you have no problem with that, you're not bringing any issues into the bedroom. So it really also has to do with doing your own internal work of like releasing shame and all of this. And then just being like, this is cool. Like you don't apologize for brushing your teeth and using an electric toothbrush. You're just like, hey, here's my toothbrush. I'm brushing my teeth and doing a good job, right? So... You just say, honey, I need DVP today, and you've only got one penis. <laughs> <laughs> Double vaginal penetration, if you didn't know what DVP was. <laughs> I love that all three of us, though, didn't need any explanation. Everybody <laughs> laughed. <laughs> but I, you know, all jokes aside, right, it's really about communication with mm -hmm. your partner. And it's the sort of thing that you should be communicating about before you even get into the bedroom. And it shouldn't be an issue. By the time you're in the bedroom, that shouldn't be an issue anymore. Absolutely. So um, we've got two more questions. Um, one is, if you have any tips to make sex stories more sexy? Oh, um, I think sex toys, you know, I think date product sex toys are pretty sexy. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of them are pretty sexy. Um, I think that it's always about intention setting. I think that like objects can have a lot of power. So before when we were talking about how like it's never really the tool, it is predominantly us. But there is a very different tools are more addictive than others, right? Different tools, like they can have power and you can kind of, you know, generally when we design toys, we like to talk about trying to make the product not the center of the experience. Mm. It actually can be really fun too. And we want to make it so that the toy almost feels invisible. So it's really about you connecting with your partner. And this is like a little sprinkle that you're adding to your experience. But if you want, you can also really elevate the product and make it and use the tool and like worship the tool too a little bit. And that can really like elevate like the, the anticipation of using it. So it becomes like a sexy thing, like if you're good or bad, you know, whichever you want to be, and maybe we'll bring this, we can use this tool so it can be part of play. Um, I think that that can be a really fun way. There's also like some remote control products where you can wear them all day um, and it's your little secret or your partner can control it from across the room. There are so many ways. And again, like this is where the tool really kind of becomes a little bit more centered in the experience. But I think that by giving it that space, it can really shine and become its own sexy object. Mm -hmm. I, I love that you can do both with that. The idea that it can sort of disappear into the background and it can also be a main focus. You know, one of the things I used to say all the time, I used to race downhill mountain bikes and whenever we'd go out and do like training runs and stuff, you know, we'd be done and somebody would say, how's your bike working? You know, and I would say, you know what? I'd have to stop and think. And I'd say the days when it worked the best were the days when I didn't notice it was there, when it was just right. me and the trail. And I had to like, you know what? I didn't have a single thought about what my bike was doing in the whole, the whole run down that mountain. That's when it yeah. really felt good. So, so I love that you've designed the products to kind of be like that. They kind of like, they blend in. You're not focused so much on them, but yet they're adding to the experience. They're enabling the experience. While mm. at the same time, if you want to make it a focus, you can. That's pretty cool, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. So uh, we are going to give you our favorite question, which is the one we ask all of our guests. And we want to know, what is your best sexual talent, Alex? I think I give great blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. She didn't even hesitate. Dad. Some of our guests are like, uh, yeah. uh, uh, deer in headlights. I guess, like, boom. I get pretty good feedback. So, um, I, you know, I think. Well, the two of you should be friends because you give great <laughs> blowjobs too. <laughs> High five. <laughs> I would really like to get good at um, cuddling you, but I don't have as many opportunities. But I do feel like that could be 
uh, not, you know, just, you know, like I just, I don't think I'm good at it probably. Right. I don't know. So like, if I want to be this expert and when I think about life learning Mm -hmm. and like continuing to expand, I would like to, I'd like to be able to please all. Oh, so that's your next sexual talent that you're aiming all for. Right. Good for you, Alex. This is not a boring life at all. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so yeah. we, we've got a link for all of your listeners in the descriptions to check out the Dame products um, and look at all their collections because there is going to be something for you for sure. Um, and Tell our listeners um, if there's any other places to that they can find you, follow you. Um, yeah. We are Dame Products, um, dot com. We are Dame Products on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. And my handle is A Fine Human because I'm <laughs> Alex Fine and I'm a human. <laughs> very clever very clever Thanks. so you can follow alex there too <laughs> <laughs> well darn you know I, I wish we weren't running out of time which we actually are because it sounds like alex that you and your partner have quite the sex life i'd love to dive down into <laughs> find out some more about that but sometimes we don't too and i've, I've learned to also not like keep track have you guys ever, you know, or I'm like, oh, it's not enough, it's not enough. I'm just like, ah, it is what it is. As long as I'm enjoying it when we're doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yep. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Alex, for joining us mm-hmm. and helping everybody out there feel more comfortable about sex toys and possibly bringing them into their bedroom and their relationship. Yes. Thank you, guys. Passion, it, it can be there for a long time if you, like, make it an intention. And I feel like you guys are bringing that to people. And that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. All right, everybody. That's all the time we have for this episode. And we will see you next week. We hope you like this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoy this show, subscribe, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. And for more free, exclusive content, join us in the Passion Vault at CelineRemy.com forward slash vault. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y dot com forward slash vault. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing. <laughs>